sorry through this uh sorry through this uh, pandemic that we are, are were not able to meet uh, quite a while now and uh, let's hope that uh, things are going to go back to normal now and we will be able to get together and uh, uh, as a community we stay together and we grow together and we make sure that our voice is heard among uh, the uh, labor party in the hierarchies and uh, you know that we participate fully in uh, local government as well as uh, national politics also so you know that uh, there are i think that the obstacles but uh, we should not be deserted by that and we should put some extra effort to make sure that uh, we are there and to make sure that our voice is heard and uh, uh, we make a difference for our community, you know, the, and uh, uh, I think that uh, the world is changing very fast. Uh, and, uh, you know, that uh, uh, Black Lives Matters made a lot of differences internationally, as well as uh, uh, in the UK. Uh, also, and it's making difference uh, internationally more. And uh, but I think that at the same time, we are worried also that the extreme right wing uh, people in politics are growing also as well. So we should monitor, uh, uh, you know, these activities very carefully, and we should be prepared and uh, uh, make ourselves uh, ready to deal. Uh, and I think the best thing is this, that we join the mainstream politics, you know, which is uh, uh, part of the Labour Party and uh, Labour Party is the forum which, you know, always, uh, uh, you know, listen to the BME community and, uh, uh, you know, they, they try their best to help the BME community and the social justice, uh, you know, it's... Uh, and the moral of the Labour Party uh, on this ground, which the Labour Party was found. And uh, we are still working on that. I mean, there are some uh, problems in between, but I think generally uh, we are uh, given a chance to raise our voice in, in, within the Labour Party. And I'm very happy that you people take very active part in that. And we will still uh, be you know uh, you know doing our things which will make a difference to our community thanks Ola. thank you so much thank you thank you so much for that wonderful welcome sp opening speech i thank you so much councillor javid thank you for finding time out of your busy schedule thank you so much i just want to give a quick five minutes for every one of us if there's anybody that wishes to say something, let's have a interactive session. And what are you expecting from joining today? What, what interests you for joining today? Let's have a quick uh, interactive session with each other. I could see Sam, Sam hand. Sam hand is up. Yes, have it, Sam. Unmute yourself, Sam. Yeah, thanks, Roy, sir. I'm very much worried in, within the Labour Party. The unexpected delayed indefinite suspension of the Ford report. Some of us of who are implicated in the report, I don't know whether I should stay in the Labour Party or not. What's going on in the Labour Party? About racism within the Labour Party, both on the right and the left, as we know it ourselves. What's going on? I want to know, please. Thanks. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. That has been noted. This is why we said with Thank lost you. connection with our community. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, Ola. I just want to make a very quick comment. Uh, uh, on this subject, I'm working very closely with uh, our MP, Alex Cunningham, who is the Minister of Court and Justice and Court. Uh, he's a Shadow Minister of uh, uh, Justice, Alex Cunningham. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm working with him very closely, actually. We tried to set up the meeting uh, for a few months, but uh, you know, it's still there is a restriction for the MPs. They cannot meet people uh, within a parliament, but I think we, we are raising this concern with him. And uh, I, I have said to him that, look, uh, I don't only 
meet people on Teesside. I travel around the country, uh, meeting various groups, which uh, I recently started to do that again. And uh, the trust among the BME community uh, from the Labour Party is really low. And people are asking questions, why, what the Labour Party is doing for us. You know, it's not the automatically that people has voted Labour Party for generation and they will vote again. But now the people are asking questions. How the trust has gone low? Why is that? And uh, I think that Alex has uh, suggested me that uh, before Christmas next month, he is going to make a date available uh, for the BME community to ask him the questions. And he is going to do the listening exercise. Man. Once the date is set, I will share the date with you. Then we can come together on T side and uh, we will ask him the questions. Thank you. I think Sam, uh, that is a bit uh, helpful, but uh, we will still also put these questions across to the regional body. And uh, as a group, we'll come back and also deliberate on this. Thank you so much. Uh, Uya, Yannick, I could see your hand. BME volunteer, I could see your hand. Is there anything you want to say? Um, Any contribution? Yes. Um, greetings, brothers and sisters. Thank you, Brother Ola. Um, thank you, Brother Baku, as well. Um, thank you, Councillor, for, for sharing as you have. Um, I have two questions very quickly. Um, the first, with regards to, we're based in Greenwich, we work in surrounding boroughs in London. With regards to the trust you've just mentioned and the black vote, um, is it true that within the government itself, London um, as a city, doesn't actually fall under the jurisdiction. And so therefore, when we are actually voting um, in London, it actually doesn't have any influence whatsoever. That, that's my first question. And I guess my, my, my second one is with regards to what I've posted, the Magna Carta as it relates to the UK. I just wanted to know what your understanding of Article 61, specifically 1215 is, and whether or not you believe it has any legal standing in the UK. Thank you. Brother Kwaku, do you have anything to say in regards to that? Uh, I think I have to take note of that particular quest. I've seen it in the chat. I will seek uh, input from the leaders of this uh, group to see. And uh, if you registered, we will follow up and we'll try as much as possible to respond to that particular question regards to Article 61. I've noted that particular question in the chat box. I will get back to you, brother. What's his name again? Yes. I've seen Dr. Lawal, you raise your hand. Are you dropping it up? Dr. Lawal, I see your hand again before. Okay, don't worry. So. Is there anyone that wants to shout out, that wants to say hello, that wants to say why you joined this and what are you looking forward to at the end of this short meeting? Short yeah, time. sorry. Uh, I'm Dr. Lawal. I just want, I'm new here. I just want to greet everybody to say I'm happy you've been among the great people over here. Uh, um, we are really ready. I'm really ready to learn and mingle, then understand what is going on. Well done, you. Mr. Laliko. You Thank are you. Dr. Laliko. You are really doing well. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Uh, is anyone speaking? Yeah, good evening, everyone. And uh, my name is Comrade Oludare Ulura. Right. Um, this is my first time of joining international politics, actually. I've always had um, the political experience and scenario in back home in Africa, West Africa, Nigeria, to be precise. So, and I'm glad to be part of this party and being part of this body. And um, I'm willing, I'm ready to have a quick forward and have a success in all. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Oh, brother, I've seen your second question again, brother Yannick Mia. Is it true that black vote? Yes, I've seen your question. Yes, I've noted that one as well. I've noted that one. So I will definitely see 
how we gather everything. But what I want to suggest is that uh, let's be this group is a kind of uh, trying to see how positively we could make that change, you know, collectively, because uh, we don't want anybody to do this for us. We want to do it by ourselves. We want to make that impact by ourselves. We want to let them know our vote matters. If they don't take our vote serious, then we let them know the impact of our votes. Whether they like it or not, they know without us, there's nothing like them. So it is we that make them to be. So we have to make use of that. So if you, at your leisure time, please go to the website, tisvalleylabor.org.uk. You see a lot of information there about us, how to join the current campaign, how to donate to support, how to contact us. Please feel free to join us. I don't want to waste much of our time. In that note, I would like to welcome our guest speaker for tonight. Uh, I cannot wait to, to, to hear from him. I've almost learned so much uh, in many group meetings I've met him, and I know all of you will also benefit today, tonight, and uh, it's going to be a new journey for us to see how we turn things around, particularly in this Valley, especially Middlesbrough, Stockton, Darlington, Hartlepool, down to Newcastle, Gateshead. We are here to sustain and to make those impacts. Uh, thank you, Brother Kweku. You have a floor. I will allow you to do your brief introduction by yourself. Oh, I see. Sorry, I didn't have my, my microphone stand up. Brother Olale, can, can you hear me now? I hear you. Okay. I hear you now. Right, okay. So I'm going to go share screen. I want you to confirm you can see my screen. Uh, but in the meantime, can I say good evening to all of you? Very glad that you can share your evening with us. And I'm hoping that we'll go through a learning experience together. So on that note, Brother Olale, can please confirm whether you can see my screen? Yes, yes, we can see your screen, brother. Okay. In that case, my name is Kwaku. I do a number of things. Uh, I'll just introduce you those on the screen. I'm very much involved in Black music and the industry side. I'm also involved in history. So we I deliver history programs. I write projects and stuff like that. I'm very much interested in identity politics, particularly African identity. So uh, I'm the coordinator of something called the African or Black Question. And I'm doing this program as part of BTWSC, which stands for, uh, it's just gone out of my head, <laughs> Beyond the Will Smith Challenge. So we've got a strand called Liberation School Session, in which we do a lot of training, particularly uh, social and political uh, training. So this is part of uh, the AIM, the Lee Valley AIM political ed education program. So as it says on here, our topic today is postal voting. So you can see the flyer or one of the flyers that was used to promote this event. So I always believe that uh, the knowledge is not just in the, in, in the presenter, but also in the audience, for example, uh, I do a lot of music industry courses and I have people, they say, oh, they don't know anything. That's why they come on course. And I'll say, you still know something. So I very much engage and try to uh, tease out what people know so I can add to it. Learning is not just the, the, the facilitator or the lecturer coming A, B, C, D, down. Sometimes it's got to come this way so I can know how to feed how to 
uh, pitch what I'm doing. Are you okay on that? Can someone say yes? Yeah, so I know that you are actually hearing me. Yes. Thank you very much. So on that note, there is a bit of interactive uh, uh, interactivity in, 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 this, in this program. So the first question is not a rhetorical question. I do expect some responses. So yes, we're supposed to be talking about postal vote. In the flyer, it says, how much do you know about postal vote? By the way that question has been framed, that is saying that we expect you to know something. Maybe you might think you don't know much. That's why you're on here. But there's no doubt that you know something. Even if it's wrong, it does not matter. So I want you to offer responses. If it's wrong, and I know it's wrong, I will correct you. So in either case, if you're right, we all learn. If you're wrong, we all learn in the sense that I respond with what the correct answer should be. So without further ado, this is your time to respond. And uh, I'm sure you can unmute yourselves and, and, and answer. So or else I, I, I can see the room. So if you use your electronic hand, I'm sure Brother Olali Khan will point to you and then you can have the floor. So what is postal voting? Please, someone respond. We've got about, I don't know, 15, 16 people in the room. So I expect to get some responses. Go ahead. Now, it does look as though we are heading for a change. I'm going to stay with Aberdeen for the time being. If you take a look at what's to come, a little bit of a roller coaster with the temperature going from 17 to a cooler feel into the weekend, a little bit of a blip through the middle part of the week, but then that frontier cool projection will be cool there Thursday to Friday with those sort of showers. Now, although that's Aberdeen, that's the trend generally of the country in terms of the feel of the weather. So, I'm not quite sure. I'm hearing some voices. Is that voice answering the question that is out, which is what is postal voting? What do you understand by postal voting? I really do want some response from the room. Feel free to raise your hand. Feel free to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Hello. Go ahead. Yes, with that, go ahead. Yes, that, <clears throat> this is Kenny from uh, Scotland. Okay, go ahead, what I, Kenny. What I understand by postal voting is that I will make a choice of whomever I want to vote for and send my choice through the post office down to the uh, electoral uh, guys. So, and my, my, and my vote counts. That's what I believe is postal voting. Thank you very much for making an effort. Can we have one or two more people so we know uh, what you think? Because people express things differently. So uh, don't just take what uh, the gentleman has just said. If you've got something to add, please do. And Brother Lalikan, I hope you can see a hand go up or two. So what is postal voting? What do you understand by postal voting? or postal vote, whichever, please. Let's have some responses and some interactivity, interaction, yes? Do you want me to start by saying, do we know voting as well? Maybe people don't even know voting. Maybe that's give a bit concern. Okay, so brother, a lot of councils, maybe we should go to basics and not be presumptuous. So when we say we're voting, what does that mean? Please, we're not being patronizing. This is a learning session. It says on the, on the, I think, booking page, a political edu education. We talk about liberation school session. So it's about liberating our minds, learning in order to uh, liberate whatever we want, to, uh, we want liberation from, or for. So Brother Lelikan wants us to go to basic by not being presumptuous. So when we say voting, what do we mean, please? These are not rhetorical questions. So it, we, as I said, I don't know how many people in the room, but the last time I looked, it was about 15. So there are enough people in the room to give a response. What do we mean when we say we're voting? That, that might be too much for people again. Is there anyone that has ever voted in the house? Anyone that has ever voted in any election year? If you have ever voted before, can you signify? 
Um, actually, as I write, my name is, once again is Komedo Ludare. This is my um, first time of um, having an, um, an experience internationally to vote or to be part of any political party. And I would, I would actually seek that um, a coordinator or and, um, you guys can actually advise us more or enlighten us more. Because so many of us are new in the system and we don't really know what really entails. And okay. um, there's something I learned about um, Right, and um, I think there's something about, I, I heard something about um, voters, right, or something I need to register to vote, or, or right to vote, exactly. So which um, I, I believe most of us make a decision on this. Yes, can you assist? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, comrade. Maybe... Brother Kweku. Yes? Someone from our Facebook has just answered a question now. Voting is right. I have to choose my representatives in government. So this means even wherever you are coming from in your home country or where you are now or wherever you are, it's about voting. Have you ever voted wherever you come from before or wherever you've been before in part of your life? Have you ever voted before? So thank you uh, for answering that question from York. I think those people in York, we give them the 100% the now. They are, they are topping now. Right, thanks a lot. I think, uh, thank you from York. But I think the point that brother comrade made is quite important. What he's told me is that uh, we, should, we should understand that people are at different levels. So if you don't mind, I'm going to start from ground zero and let's build uh, up. So I'm not going to ask the question. I'm assuming that people don't know. So let's go. Right. In the UK, you can vote if you are 18 and above age because you're an adult at the age of 18, right? So who's eligible to vote? Anyone of a British, British citizenship or a Commonwealth citizen resident in the UK can vote. So from what I'm taking, most people may be quote unquote immigrants from outside the UK, but resident in the UK. So if you legally resident in the UK, and or you're from a Commonwealth country, you can, you, you can vote in the British elections, fine, good. The other thing is that you have to be 18 or above an adult. What is voting? There are different votes, by the way. So we tend to look at what is the general election. The general election is called for the electorate. The electorate means the people, the constituency that are eligible to vote to vote for MPs to go to parliament to represent us. There are about, I think, 600 or 550 MPs. Somebody can correct me, they Google it. So uh, there's a finite number of uh, MPs in the House of Commons. We don't vote for the House of Lords. We do not, there are two chambers of uh, parliament in the UK. House of Lords or the Commons and the House of Lords. The House of Lords, we don't vote for them, but we vote for the Commons. So an MP is a, uh, an elected representative who sits in the House of Commons. Some Lords sit in the House of Lords, but that's a different thing. Let's not worry too much about it. Or maybe I should explain whilst we are here. Is the House of Commons that does the laws, then it's pushed up to the House of Lords who review it and they say yes, or sometimes they can have an argument with the government to say no, take out this clause or whatever, and it goes backwards and forwards till there's an agreement. So that's how the, so you can say that there's checks and balance in the sense that uh, the, the, there is the House of Commons that is there to primarily make the law. And I think the laws are there to oversee and to get, give those checks and balances. And sometimes uh, they do give the government a tough fight if they don't want certain things in, in what is going on. So what happens is that there's something called a bill. Somebody pro proposes a bill. Let's say um, a bill, let's change the world upside down. A bill to allow all immigrants to come into the UK. I'm saying that in the context of having a government that's stopping immigration, not to mention that I think there's a bill going through that will strip people of their nationality. So 
someone proposes a bill to let in all immigrants. It goes through uh, different city, sittings in the House of Commons. And at some time through its process, the House of Lords oversee it. And if they're not happy with certain things, they can um, suggest uh, amendments and they'll go back to the House of Commons. They work through it and it takes a while until pretty much people are, are happy with what they've got and then they vote on it. And if uh, there's a majority on it, it's signed off. And at some time it becomes an act uh, of parliament, but it does not go into effect till it's had a royal assent. So you might ask yourself, what does the queen do apart from ceremonially going to open things and riding down, I don't know, past Buckingham Palace with all these stories? One of the things she does is that she has, she has regular meetings with the prime minister and uh, bills or uh, 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 acts are put before her and she has to sign it. When she signs it, then that it becomes law. So there we go. So um, the queen is not just ceremonial, she's part of the, the process of, of, of lawmaking in, in the UK. So somebody answered the question, but I'll just go back to voting. So voting is for people, the electorate, the electorates are people who can vote to decide on a list of candidates. So let's say, uh, I don't know which constituency uh, covers TSA, but let's say in every borough, for example, there'll be different, uh, what is it? Constituencies, right? So in that constituency, each uh, party will put up one candidate. So there may be one candidate for Labour, one candidate for the Conservatives and other uh, parties, including independents. So if you feel strongly, you can stand as an independent candidate. Uh, obviously, I'm not, since this is under the Labour Party auspices, I'm not going to encourage you to become an independent. So you probably look to uh, get the Labour ticket. If there's time, I can explain a bit more about how you go for selections, but that, I've got to be mindful not to drift from what we want to talk about. So the point is that people put themselves forward, they campaign, then you go to the ballot box, which is in the polling station, and there'll be a list, and then you tick. You tick who you, you, you want to vote for, and that is voting. You've ticked, and in the UK, we use a pencil. In certain jurisdictions, like in Ghana, they use a thumb print, yeah? So that is what voting is about. So as I said earlier, there are different forms of voting. General elections are for MPs to go to the House of Parliament. Then there are council elections, which you should be mindful of. Those are local elections, yeah? So every borough, that's its form of parliament, will have our local elections for councillors. So if you hear someone is called a councillor, there was councillor Mohammed, I do believe, was on this meeting earlier. He is a councillor, and he meets in the, count, the council, your civic center, wherever, your town hall. That is where they, they meet and they make decisions that affect that locality, is that borough. In London, I do believe, I'm in London, I do believe that we have 33 boroughs. So uh, there'll be 33 councils. And I think about each borough, I'm not sure what happens in, in, in Teesside, but I do believe London-wide, they would have about 63 councillors. So there'll be 63 councillors. And if uh, the majority is one party, for example, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but if there are 63 councillors and say uh, Labour gets 35, then it's got a majority. So they, they, they're the ruling party for, 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 for that, that council, right? So uh, two things, or uh, in fact, three things you can vote for. General election, local elections. Then sometimes there may be a referendum. If you've been here more than three years, you may have heard there was a referendum for whether we, we vote to stay in Brexit or to go out of Brexit. So that was a referendum, not a general election, a referendum for the whole country to vote on a particular issue. Many years ago in the 1970s, we had a referendum for us to go into what was the e EEC. The EEC became the EU later on. So br the British people voted in the 1970s for Britain to join the, the EEC, which became the EU. And I think three or so years ago, they again voted 
as part of a referendum to leave the EU. So in essence, there are three major voting opportunities for the electorate. Vote for parliament, that's general election, vote for council, that's the local elections, or vote for a referendum. Three. In all those three cases, you go to what is called a polling station. I've talked about boroughs, boroughs who have constituencies, depending on how big they are. Then in each constituency, there are wards. So it's another breakdown of the constituency. So voting will have a number of polling booths in different wards. So you cannot just go and vote anywhere. You vote within your ward and it will tell you on the voting form which polling station for you to vote, which is usually the one nearest to you. Yeah? So on election day, between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., you can walk walk into the polling station and vote. You normally have a card which tells you where to vote and you take it with you. If you don't have it with you, I suppose they could check your ID, but I'm, I'm saying it's safer for you to have the polling card to, with you. Britain has got, I'll say, a more relaxed way of voting than certain countries. Uh, I suppose the level of uh, election fraud is not so bad in, in the UK. So uh, there isn't a lot of rigor in terms of who is, who is voting, uh, but we mustn't uh, uh, abuse it. And I do know on occasions people have abused it by trying to vote more than once. You're only supposed to vote once, once in any election. Some crafty people try and, uh, and vote more than once in different places, which is illegal and you could go to jail if you found out. So it's not worth it. That's a, 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 a fraud. Okay. So normally you just get, show your card, they'll look, then they've got a, a list of people who are supposed to vote. Normally what they'll ask you is what, what, what is your address? Because they go by the address. So they look at the name of the road and look at the address. Because what's happening is that once they've identified you, they'll take that so-so-and-so at this address and vote, so they'll take it because that's important when they're collating the number of votes to go to the council, yeah? So I'm jumping ahead of myself. Not to worry, I'm responding to you. I've got a slide, but I don't have to speak to the slide. So they take this piece of paper for all the, the names, not the names of, of, of the people in different addresses in the area. And then at the end of the day, I think they will count it. And then they will say how many ballot boxes we have. So if they've got 800 uh, ballots in the boxes, it must tell you the, the sheet in which they take the names of people by their addresses, yeah? And that goes to the council and then the council people and their agents will make sure it's all verified. Then people start counting them. So we've talked about, in fact, I haven't talked about postal voting at all. I've talked about fiscal voting, which you go to the ballot box and you take. But there's another option. You don't have to go to the, uh, the, the ballot box to vote, but your vote can still be counted. And I think that's what was said when I, the person answered my question. We've got an option of voting by post. So since that is the topic for me to discuss, I, I, I will I'll go to the slide because it speaks directly to it. But thank you for those that made an offer to answer my questions, right? The next question is, why is postal, why postal vote instead of, oh, I, I can't even read things because I don't think I've read, yeah. So why postal vote instead of going to the pol polling station? So that's a question from what I've said and also maybe thinking about it, I'd like to have one or two answers before I move on. Why do you think one want to postal vote instead of going to the polling station to vote? And so, yeah. So, uh, Brother Lele can add any hands because I like people to answer the question. Forget my, the way I, I've written up there. But the question is, 
Why do you think people want to postal vote instead of going to, to vote at the polling station? Can okay. I have one or two answers? Hello? Hello? Yeah, this is Kenny once again. Um, people want to do postal, uh, postal voting for convenience. So that is the reason that there are some disabled people or people that are actually less privileged, blind people that could actually use that particular medium to make their own choices. Okay, thank you very much. That is very good. Can I have at least one more answer from someone else, please? Let's make this as interactive as we can. Or uh, Facebook people, whoever, can we have at least one more answer before I move on? Because this is not supposed to be a lecture, quite frankly. Be so be 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 on. Go ahead. Mr. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. from, yes, go ahead. Okay, with postal voting, you will not have to think twice about voting for who you really want to vote for without being discriminated against. I'm, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Can you explain a bit? Because I'd imagine uh, whatever voting you do, you have to think a bit about it. So maybe you haven't, you haven't expressed it properly. So do you want to come again so we understand uh, what exactly you're saying, please? But go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I was putting the Nigerian factor into consideration. Mm -hmm. With, but in the UK, I think with postal voting, you mm -hmm. you've already taken a decision on who you want to vote for. Yes. Now, when you get to the polling station, you may meet one or two persons that may want to influence your decision, even directly or indirectly. But with postal voting, you've taken your decision. You've ticked your candidate and you conveniently, confidently, comfortably vote for whoever you want to. Okay, that's a very good answer. And maybe I think the subtext to that answer is that in certain regimes, but thank goodness in the UK that does not happen, people are intimidated going towards a, a polling booth. Sometimes people can actually be physically manhandled or even stopped from voting. But as the gentleman said, if you, you've done your postal vote, that's an advance. So you voted already. So no one can stop you voting because you've actually voted. I hope that makes sense to you. But I'll say uh, what he says doesn't really apply in the UK in the sense that, uh, in fact, uh, the agents are supposed to be uh, a number, there's a, a designated number of yards that are supposed to be away from the, uh, the, 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 the polling uh, booth. But uh, agents do not really intimidate people uh, from my experience in U UK voting. At the best, what they do is that they want to have a sense of what's going on. So they may come and ask you who you voted for. Some people lie, some people don't, because in fact, uh, I do believe that people lie a lot, especially when they're voting for a party that they think is not popular. Because I, if I would imagine, if you're an area that is known to be Labour, you probably are not going to say you voted conservative for another party. Or if you voted UKIP, you probably are not going to say you voted UKIP. So people tend to lie. And some of the exit polls can be a bit faulty. Because as a way they do exit polls, they interview people be, uh, before the, 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 the votes have been counted and make an estimate based on those uh, engagement with people who've, who voted. But we do know that people are not always truthful in their answers or uh, they tend to give answers that they think are uh, the posters looking for, particularly depending on the area in which they're in. So yes, uh, that is another uh, positive for why people may want to uh, do postal voting, right? So before I, I go a bit more into postal voting, one of the things Brother Olalekin was looking at is to understand the idea of uh, community activism and then we'll talk about the uh, information on postal voting. Community activism means that, not that you out and about doing what interests you, going to play football because you're interested in football, going to work because you need to make money and not being engaged with what's going on in your community. Community activism is that there's some rubbish heap in the corner of your road. You don't just walk past it. You either get your community, your people around you say, let's do something about this. One thing you can do is phone up the council and say, look, there's some fly tipping in here. 
and most times they will come and collect it. So it doesn't make your area look horrible, but no, community activism is doing something and not waiting for somebody or expecting someone else to do it. Community activism is going on the road. A few weeks ago, in fact, less than two weeks ago, Brother Lerican and some people went on the road to campaign against the social services or uh, taking children to care. That is the active impact in the sense that you have to be active. You have to go on the road to march, to maybe have your placards, or maybe sometimes make noise. But the world is changing. You can be an active activist in your, in, in your chair. Before, we had to fill in paper to do petitions. You had to have thousands of petitions. Then you walk all the way to Downing Street or wherever to hand that petition. Today, you can be in your bedroom and still uh, sign up for a petition, which will be electronically delivered to 10 Downing Street or whoever the target of that petition is, uh, is aimed at. So activism can be both fiscal and I'll use passive, but I'll say electronic in the sense that you can use digital media, the internet to still express your feelings on, 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 on issues. But at the very least, you are engaged in an issue. That's what community activism, it, community activism is about. Being engaged, being proactive in moving something forward, whatever issue uh, uh, is of concern to you. From the big global, Last week, you had the COP26, which was about uh, climate change. That's a global issue. And you might want to uh, sign up to some of the petitions or to remind our leaders to take the commitments they've made seriously. That's a global one. To something small in your area, but that's of importance to your area. Maybe the bus isn't going through a certain area. You think we should have a bus service through this area. You get your people, your area together, and you petition the, the local bus service to put that bus route through that area because it's needed. You make a case for it and not just sit down and expect somebody else to do it. Right. So voting is part of that process. But what Brother Lelican wants us to know today is that, yes, it's important to go to the polls, but you can still vote to that going to the polls and the option being postal uh, voting or proxy, which I, I, I'll go to in a moment, right? It is generally believed that the conservative voters tend to vote, whether by postal vote or going to the booth. In the sense that when there's an election, they are more inclined to vote, simple. These are generalities I'm giving, but I think uh, the underlining theme is uh, valid. Labor voters tend to be less proactive in the sense that, oh, probably they're working, we'll see how it goes, that kind of thing. Hence, Labor Party encourages postal voting amongst its members because they know that if you leave it to them, come election day, something is cropped up and they don't go to vote or they clocked off work late, so they didn't vote. Remember, voting is from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can vote before you come to work, you go to work, but if you don't get the opportunity, you're hoping to vote after work, and then there's overtime. Ooh. ah, overtime and voting. Cha, I need the extra pounds. So you, you take overtime, and it means voting. So that is why uh, they tend to encourage postal voting because that means you've done it, done and that's it, as they say. Okay. So we focus on postal voting. We've explained why Labour Party encourages uh, postal voting. So now, how do you go about it? You can apply to your local election um, office, and I, I'll give you information later on, so don't worry about that. You can apply for a single election or all the elections, so you say permanently. So each time there's, there's an election, please send me the, uh, 
uh, the the the, the, the um, vote form because I'm just doing by postal vote. So until you receive that order, you're on their system as someone who does postal voting. As I said, it can be for a single one. Or oh, this referendum, oh, I think I'm going to do postal voting. But for the general election, oh, I think I'm going to go to the polls. You make that decision. Before I move the slide, just remind you, when you make an application for postal voting, it can be for a particular vote, election rather, or it can be for all the elections until you change your mind. Good. Quick, quick. Yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you for going on. Just a quick question to answer, uh, Dr. Lawal, because I'm trying to monitor question. Can international students with student visa participate in politics and join a political party group and vote? I think it's yes, yes. Uh, there's a, uh, if you go to Labour Party, just click students. Uh, type and it's three pound per year and you could also register once you register your local party will contact you you'll get the contact details and they will contact you as you are in Middlesbrough uh, you'll be much more uh, helpful to get information from me directly so if you need more information you can contact me you have right. a right to vote you have a right to be part of it thank you right so if you legally settled in the UK then uh and you're over 18 then uh you have a, a, a right to to vote okay now can i just explain that you have to assert your voting right in the sense that if you're not on what is called the electoral register then you can't vote so the fact that you can vote does not mean that you have the opportunity to vote you have to be on the register how do you get on the register two ways you can, since you people on this meeting, you're interested in the electro, in, 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 electoral process. If you're not sure, then you uh, contact your local e e electoral board and the information is at the end of this. So uh, um, let's not worry too much about it. And you can find out whether you're on. If you're not on, then you, you can request to be on and you fill in all the details and you'll be on the system. If not, when, a general election is called, the election is called uh, the, uh, from time to time, your council sends the form and you have to fill it in. In days gone by, one person could fill for everyone the household, but now the, the laws have been changed. So you have to fill it in the, individually in the household. So you have to fill as per your uh, your residence where you live the address at which you live the only thing that changes i think students who students are entitled to vote either in their home or in their university or area but generally you but you can only vote once so you can't vote in your university area then run down to your house and also vote that would be fraud you can only vote once yeah so you can only vote if you're on the electoral register. So you can always find out if you're on it, if you've never filled in that form. Good. So uh, I've said in here, whilst postal voting hopefully means that that vote is literally in the back. That means it's been done, done and that's it. Somebody's filled it in. Party activists, that campaign should be careful about how they engage with the electorate because it's very easy for you to be accused of fraud or exerting undue influence on the electorate. And that can bring your party or your LCP, your local pa party into, into disrepute. So the advice is that advise people to do the postal voting. You can tell them how to get the forms. You don't fill it in, but you encourage them to fill it in. You don't post it, but you encourage them to post it. Of course, you can inquire or remind them to fill it in and post it. 
in times gone by, some party members who will fill in the forms because the person says they're illiterate or whatever, just be careful, be careful of that. If the person can actually fill it in, let them do it. Assist them as minimally as possible, but advise them to do the postal voting. There's nothing wrong with that. It's how far you are seen to be influencing their choice. That is the issue. Okay. With the post, and I'll show you the form in the postal ballot. So let me go through it uh, for the moment so you get a sense because I'm taking it right now that you're new to this. And I'll show you a sample of the form and all. So don't worry about it. But there are two parts. Uh, you, when when you, you're going to vote, you, the ballot part where you vote, you, you can take. But there's also a section where you put your signature. Because when you apply for the postal vote and you fill in the forms, you've put in your signature. So they'll check your signature against uh, when, when you vote. Yeah, so they make sure that it's the same person voting as a person that made the postal vote application. Okay, right. Normally, so these are general figures. I'm just giving you ballpark figures. Normally, local elections, the turnout is about 30% compared to about 50% for general elections. So that means few people turn out for local elections. So a few numbers can make a difference. People have won their seats with two. With just two. Two votes. That is why party activists really encourage people to go out and vote because all votes count. Local elections won with two votes. So each vote counts. Before I move on, I have to say something. If you do not vote, what you're doing is that you are still voting. But do you know what you're voting for? You're voting for the status quo. That means you're voting for the situation which you are in. If it's OK for you, that's fine. But if you want change, then you've got to use that ballot box to give your voice. Great is believe that postal vo uh, voting increases voter turnout. Because when people vote by the post, it's done. When you're waiting for people to go to the ballot, anything can happen and they may not turn out. That is one of the reasons why the parties encourage postal voting. Great. When uh, you send in your postal votes. That's before the election date, by the way. So you send in your, your postal vote before election day. If you don't, please listen. You can still take it to the polling booth and put it in, yeah? So that's also valid. Ideally, the whole point about postal vote is that you vote before and you post it before. But if for, for some reason you don't get around to posting it, you can, on election day, take it and put it in the, uh, the ballot box, yeah? Fantastic. Okay. All the postal votes received in the council, it goes to the council. Before the election date, they open it, but they don't count it. So it's opened, they don't, they don't count it. There's proxy vote. Proxy vote, you apply for it, and the reasons I'll give later on. But I just want to say that you don't have, to, if for some reason you can't go to vote, you can give your proxy to someone to vote on your behalf to vote for who you want to vote for you. Just make sure that they are trustworthy. If you say they should vote for the Linda, Labour candidate, uh, be sure that is the type of person that will do what you want and not go and vote for you keep or whatever. So just be mindful of that. Okay. As I said, the postal votes are open every day, but not counted until after polling closes. So they count all the votes from the minute the polling closes, which is 10 p.m. Party agents meet at the council 
to validate the count. So that means each box that counts, each ballot box that counts, they find how many are in there. And then I told you about that piece of paper they've got with everybody's names and the, the, their addresses. If that sheet of paper says 200 votes, then they, that should tally with the number of votes in that box. So checks and balances. They can be counting all through the night. It depends on how big your, your area is. Once it's all counted and uh, sorted and agreed between the agents and the candidates who are all there at the council on the uh, election night, there's a person called the returning officer. It's the returning officer that will announce the final results. Often in the main uh, areas, if there's like a big MP or the prime minister, the TV cameras will be there because the TV cameras want to see, did the prime minister win his or her seat? Or if it's an important candidate, for example, the TV cameras will be there for the returning uh, officer to announce the, the, the figures. And they announce all the figures up to the one that had the, 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 the highest vote. And often when that's announced, you can see jubilation in the, back, in the back for those that have won and sadness for those that have lost. Okay. So uh, this is not that I expect you to read it. Uh, uh, hold on, what have I got? Okay, yeah. This is what the postal vote application form looks like. It's two pages. It's not too daunting. It's about you, your name, your address, stuff like that. How long do you want postal vote for? So you can tell them for a particular date or permanent address to which or uh, address for ballot uh, paper. Yeah, where do you want the, the ballot to be sent for? You've got to give your date of birth and uh, a declaration. So that means you sign it. Let's see what's on page two. Oops. Uh, previous. I'm not sure. And then previous. Okay, so I, I've got it back to front. This is the page one, sorry. Uh, it, it gives you the information. So this is what you get, the, 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 the information you, you need, how to apply and everything. And then uh, this is the actual form that you fill. Okay, so that's for the uh, postal ballot. That you can see, oh, sorry, postal voting. It's not complicated at all, one page. Not complicated at all. Okay, now, we're going to see what the government says because there's a, 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 a gov.uk page forward slash how to vote forward slash postal voting. And you can go on there and it gives you all the links to the forms, to your local uh, ele electoral office and everything you need about voting is on this, um, what should I say, microsite, gov.uk how to vote for slash uh, postal voting. So let's see what they say. Voting by post. You must apply uh, You must apply for a postal vote if you want to vote by post. For example, if you're away from home, you know you're gonna be away from home, but you want to vote, postal voting. You are abroad. Oh, you go on a holiday and the prime minister called the general election. So obviously you're not gonna stop your holiday. You can still exercise your right to vote. This is for people that want to vote in England, Scotland, or Wales. Northern Ireland has a, 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 a different uh, system and a different form altogether. With England, Scotland, or Wales, you do not have to give a reason why you want to use the postal vote but you need to give a reason if you're voting in Northern Ireland. I, I don't think that applies to most of you here. Most of you are in England. Okay. Anyone can apply to, uh, as I said, to, to vote by post. No need to give reasons, like I said, except if you're voting in Northern Ireland. And that pretty much does not apply to us. Okay. You can apply for the following a single election on a specific day, because Boris Johnson has announced that on uh, 23rd July, 2024 election, 
So you write, ooh, I don't fancy going to a post or I'll be on holiday. Or ooh, uh, I, I, I'm on a work excursion somewhere. So please, I won't post a vote for this general election this date. Or know something, it's such a, a, a traumatic experience going all the way to the polling uh, station. So I want to have po votes, sorry, postal vote from now on. Until I tell you otherwise, please always give me a postal vote because I don't want to go to the pol polling station. Or somebody's advised me it's better for me to do postal vote. Good, two choices, specific, single, or uh, for however long you want it. Great. These two cases, you going to the polling booth or you voting by postal service is to do with you. But there'll be cases where you want somebody to vote for you for whatever reason. As I said, that person should be a trusted person. You have to apply to have the vote by proxy. And these are the regulations. If you're unable to vote in person, you can ask someone to vote on your behalf. That's called proxy votes, as I said earlier on. You can only apply for a, a proxy vote under these conditions because you're going to be away on the polling day. Because you know you, you got a medical appointment and you're going to be ho hospitalized. That's a good enough reason. In fact, that's number two. You've got a medical issue or disability. And I heard somebody say disability earlier on. Yeah. So if you've got a disability that uh, challenges you to go to a, a polling station, then you can apply for a uh, 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 what should I say? Or uh, yeah, if you're a military service or, or whatever, right. Your proxy should be someone you trust to vote on your behalf. I've said that, and the government is also reminding you. You will need to tell them who you want them to vote for you. The one you want to vote for, you have to tell them. Good. There are, uh, if you want to do proxy vote, you've got to write to your local electoral registration office and I'll tell you how, how, how you can do it. These are the conditions. Usually you need to apply for a proxy vote at least six working days before the election day. If you're in England, Scotland or Wales, there's a different form for Northern Ireland and they want at least 14 working days before the general election. In the UK, it is six working days before general. By far, there's an emergency. If, uh, let's say you, you got ill, so you, you've been hospitalized as late, an, an, uh, let's say two days to election, you can have an, an emergency one, okay. So that is the next slide for you. How to apply for an emergency pro proxy vote. If the proxy vote deadline has passed, you can still apply. But these two things apl uh, apply. Because you cannot vote in person because of um, your employment or disability. Or you became aware of this reason after the proxy deadline. You became aware of this reason you, you, you didn't choose to be ill, all of a sudden you've been taken ill. Or, or some, something happened and your circumstances have changed, something you, you could not have foreseen. You can apply amazingly up to 5 p.m. on the day of the election. Isn't that great? So on here, I've highlighted the electoral registration office. That's where you, you got to, you, you've got to get it. You've got to get it, yeah? So uh, let me just jump and, and, and uh, hopefully we'll find out how do we get to an electoral registration office. But before then, let's see what a proxy uh, vote application looks like. Again, it's like the first one uh, tells you the rules and regulations, blah, blah, blah. That's on page one. And on page two, again, very, very simple, very, very simple. 
or filling for proxy is just pretty much the same as post postal voting. Right. Each borough has an electoral registration office. You can go there physically or you can engage to, with them online. So my borough is Brent. So I'm just showing you what, how I can interface with this office online. I go to the Brent uh, borough website. So the London borough of Brent. I go to their website and that'll be the same for the borough in which you live in. And I've got all these things I, I, I can check. Check, are you registered to vote? So if uh, you're not registered to vote, then if you're entitled to vote, make sure you're on the electoral register. I told you about that earlier on. Uh, you don't know your polling station, do you? No problem. Click on your, uh, find your polling station to ask you for your postcode. So they go by, by, by the postcode. Oh, you, you want a, a, a postal vote? No problem. Click on that to apply for a postal vote. Oh, you fancy voting by proxy, don't you? No problemo. Click on that and you, you, it gives you the form. You can download it, print it. You haven't got an electoral register? No problem. Click on register to vote. Ah, let's say you're married, you recently got married, so your name has changed. No problem. Click to update your name on the electoral register. You used to be, what should I say? Uh, Femi Oluwu. Since you got married, you're now Mrs. Femi Bamboji. So you need to change your name on there. Okay, so this would be similar wherever, whichever borough you're in. So that will give you all the information that you, you need to. In addition to gov.uk forward slash how to vote forward slash postal voting, it's all on there. So this gov.uk can bring you into this local or uh, electoral registration office. So the top bit is very important if you're on the internet. Go in there and it gives you all the information you need and brings you to, to your local electoral registration office. So I think you've heard from me quite a bit and our uh, brother Olelekan, I think I have covered what I wanted to tell them. So it's now for people to ask questions so I, I, we can drill down what they do not understand. So I, I'll stop uh, screen sharing, I think. Thank, thank you, thank you very much. So I'm hoping for questions with, yeah. So if anyone has questions, thank you for this amazing presentation. Thank you so much. I'm sure you must have one or two and the people on Facebook because it seemed to me that this process was new to many people. So if that's the case, then the matter, well, maybe I did a good job in explaining. Oh, brother Lerican, someone's got his hands up. So Ibenyo, uh, unmute and please make your comment or ask your question. Go ahead. Okay, good evening, sirs. Good evening. Okay, my concern is this. Whoever were voting for as a black community, have they made it? I, I don't know if the black um, community, like this particular one, the one Olola Kong is, and other black community, has sat down with these people to ask them how they will protect the interest of the black community. Because if not for the advocates like Olola Kong and one or two other advocates speaking out for the black community who are more like blacks in an island of ocean without help from anywhere. I want to know if we are to vote, because it's not just about voting, but if we are to vote, do we have candidates that has spelled out the interest they have for, on the black community and how to protect the interest of the black community so we know 
that if the black community is voting for a particular person, we're casting all our vote to that particular person because the, that particular candidate has promised to protect the interest of the black community. Thank you. Thank you. I think that is for the activist, Brother Lalikan, to answer since it seems to be a, on a, on a, a, a party related question. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that question. I think I've got another comrade on the platform. Rahana Islam, do you want to answer that for us? Or you want me to go ahead? She has stood as a candidate before, and uh, she's one of the women we look onto in Teesside, especially in uh, Middlesbrough. Rahana, do you want to say something? I recognize you okay oh somebody raise hand who raise hand is this the same hand okay thank you for me to answer that question that is why we've got people that are associated with us that are also putting our voices across for for voices to be heard but uh, the one of the importance of this platform is to empower ourselves to encourage more members from this community to also stand because you have a lived experience. For you to have a lived experience, you will be able to also impart in those policy formulations, in this, uh, in those implementation of those policy. That's why we are encouraging, empowering, and educating ourselves to give us that courage to come forward. I could see some people have interest, uh, indicate interest to join, to sign up as a labor member, to join as a political member in this Valley. That's why we create this platform, and particularly to also empower you to be activists. We need more activists. Thank you for mentioning one or two people, but we need more than that. So on this platform, any training you think you need, anything you are lacking, go ahead, let us know. And that is why this platform, we have it. If you go to our website, you will see there uh, about us, campaign, join us, successful story. And we have trainings. We also have trainings. We have trainings. So we would definitely hold them accountable. And they always organize a kind of uh, questioning time prior to election for us to know their policy, their promise, their vision. And what are they meant? What are they trying to do? I've got a hand, brother Said. If you could just do that quickly, that would be appreciated in a very quick way. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you very much, brother Ola. I think I want to give a big round of applause for brother Ola for from the black community coming out and doing. I've been watching uh, brother Ola for uh, maybe three, four years. But we've been working together. And I think uh, you are doing amazing work for Save the Women and empowering the women as well. And I think we're on the same level. We need to, in Asia, you know, in the Asian uh, community, we need to empower the women as well. And it's like, I'll tell you, you know, every, on every meeting with the Asian people, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people there. I could, you know, I share some of the photographs, but they're very restricted. And, you know, the the only the men come in, no, no women. You know, and I think uh, I think we, you know, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, you know, and our wives as well. You know, we want to empower them. And we want to show the black community of Africa is like a great nation. We are we become slave because they steal everything from us. You know, the diamond, gold, they steal even today. We are we are blind. We are not seeing it. Okay, and we can only speak. I can only speak here. You know, I, I need, uh, like Brother Allah said, we need activists. We need people with us to show the power, you know, like how oh, I, I feel like speaking, you know, like on behalf of Muhammad Ali, you know, he, he turned Islam and he speak for Asia, he speak for Africa and everybody, you know, and he speak against the West, you know, causing so much atrocity. And thankfully, you know, his, uh, his voice is uh, still circulating today. We see it. But, you know, I think finally, I want a wonderful meeting and uh, I think, uh, you know, I learned a lot as well, you know, I've been working, I'm on my mobile, I'm not in the home and I thank you for uh, letting me speak and thank you for everything. 
And I think, uh, you know, it's been uh, quite educational about learning how to vote and about the democratic system that we have. And I think, I think the Asian as well as African, they're sleeping. They're afraid, you know, they, they go into factory work from 12 hours, maybe from 6 o'clock to 6 o'clock on the night, and they're too tired and going to sleep. But there's only a few people that can speak for them. You know, I've been doing it for many, many years, you know, and I think I, we want to continue speaking for them. We will die speaking for them, and we will give our life. Now, like you said about M MPs, and other MPs, even black MPs or Asian MPs, or even Asian councillors, they're on a risk, big risk. You, we know that. And, uh, you know, Black Lives Matter raised that as well, and we can copy the Black Lives Matter. But in UK, the, there's too much fascism, too much hatred, you know, and we fight beyond within ourselves as well. But the MPs and the councillors and anybody that's in you know, a hierarchy, you know, the elected position, they do run the risk. You know, some of them lose their life and stuff like that, and we, we need to respect, you know. I think that's all I want to say that. So thank you again, everybody. Thank you for the speaker as well, and everybody that spoke, and everybody that listened to me as well. And uh, God bless you all. And uh, let's thank keep on working and uh, be positive. Thank you. Thank, thank you, brother. Uh, we normally have a physical meetings before that we always invite our MP, our councillor, our mayor, and they always come at least answer some questions. Uh, I've had appointments with uh, uh, Alex Conyam, MP for Stockton. But I will be suggesting to him, rather than me having one-to-one, -one, possibly we will bring him on this platform in one of the following subsequent ones. And uh, through that, uh, these questions can be put across and also our other, other members of parliament as well. And if anyone is willing to stand as a councillor, we've got people that have stood before, we've got people that have won, and we've got people that we can put you across to shadow you can start shadowing, you can start learning what are the rules of counselor, what are they doing, how can you become a counselor. We'll be organizing another event soon that will be tailoring within this area of how to stand as a counselor in your local area. Well, what's important is, first of all, sign up, join a political party. If you are still doubting, I could tell you, we could come as a body and make our voice heard through this Labour Party platform. There are still much hope, there are still much we can do together. There might be a lot of misunderstanding, there might be a lot of local issues or national issues, but uh, definitely more can be achieved positively. When is the next election? It depends, it depends. There are some uh, if they're in London, they might be having in May 2022, but I believe in our local area here, it will be in 2023. But we have to start that movement now. That is why we are coming together now. We empower ourselves. We need to bring out the best. We want to present the best of the best among us. I've got your hand again, Brother Sahid. Is there anything you want to add? I'm sure. Yes, I, think... I want to. Um, I want to stand um, as a counselor, and uh, I think uh, I want to request from you. I, I already did, you know, personally, but uh, I think it's better that we work together. Maybe. Um, obviously, I, I can stand for Linsaw Board in Middlesbrough, or uh, just stand for you know the. I think uh, um, the um, Newport Ward is congested. I think there's already five people, maybe four people standing already for that. So maybe I think we need to look at Linsaw Ward, and maybe that will help us in our future that, that, campaign. That, that, that is fine. We're anyone that is interested should come forward. We will be putting some trainings together. Brother Kweku, you've got something to add. Yes, um, I'm just putting something in the chat because I'm going to mention something called LCP. So our uh, uh, Labour Party has got uh, a jargon. Why isn't it going? I'm trying to... Ooh, very odd. I can't send something. I, uh, hold on. I, I, was, I was trying to send something. Uh, if not, you, you can go online or I can give it to you to send later. But for some reason, uh, I, I want to put some in the chat and it's not going on. I'm, I'm pressing return. Oh, it's gone now. Okay, so I'm going to use a term because in any organization, they've got jargon. One of the jargons will be uh, CLP. So CLP stands for Constituency uh, Labor Party. So let me just explain. You don't need to be in the Labor Party to vote for a Labor candidate, okay? I'm going from... The, 
uh, grass, ground zero because I noticed that some people are not aware of the, uh, the whole political process. You don't have to be in a, a political party to vote for a, a, any person represent a particular party. However, if you like the policies of a party, hopefully Labour Party, then you can join. When you join, then you become a member. But if for 20 years you've been voting for the Labour candidate, that does not make you a member of the Labour Party. What it makes is a supporter of Labour Party. But once you join, you become a member. So you're part of the decision-making process. And let me tell you how far that goes. Of course, you got to pay your dues and they've got different skills for students, unemployed and whatnot. Union members. Some people pay through their union. Unions also pay to certain uh, political parties. Right. Once you're a member, you can be part of the decision-making process of your LCP. There's something called the, the highest board of the, the, the Labour Party is the NEC, National Executive Council or Committee, whatever, whatever it, it is. You can put in your little bit that decides who is up there. But on the local level, MPs are selected. Last time, because it's just a rash election, they didn't go around selecting MPs. So that means if you're a sitting candidate, uh, you're, you're, you're good to go to be elected. But normally MPs are selected by the constituency party. So if the, 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 the the candidate is not opposed, then fair enough. But if there are different candidates, you go to meetings and they put forward their views, you listen to them and you decide who to vote for. So your vote counts in the process of selection. So nobody becomes a candidate if they're not selected. It's the membership that selects the, uh, the candidate. So I'm saying by becoming a member, you can have an influence on who represents your area. But if you're not a member of Labour Party, then you vote for whoever they decide to become uh, the, the, the candidate for, for, your, for, your, for your area. Your area is called a constituency. Or as I said, your small area is a ward and the different wards make up a, con a constituency. And in a borough, there can be a number of constituencies in that borough. For example, I live in the, uh, London, the borough of Brent. And we've got at least two Brent, um, what should I say, constituencies. Brent Central, and I'm getting confused, there's another Brent. There used to be a Brent East, and I think they merge there into Brent Central. And then there'll be another constituency, but it's still part of uh, Brent, the council. But I can only vote in where I live, which is Brent Central. So understand what, which is the smallest area for voting, particularly local elections. And then there's a constituency. Oh, I have to say, I don't know what it is for T Valley, but uh, in, in, in London, each ward has three candidates. So you can, you, you, uh, three, three candidates, yeah? Because you're gonna end up with three councillors for each ward. So, uh, and Labour could, could win the whole three, or you can, have, you can have what's called mixed results, in which maybe Labour has got two and the Conservative or Liberal has got one. Yeah, because certain areas will maybe favor liberal and certain areas in the same uh, world will, will, will favor labor. So that, that, that can happen. Then, so you can vote for ward and then you vote for uh, the, the, the constituency, which is part of, of your council for uh, the, the general elections, I people to go into, in, in, into parliament. So I, I hope that sort of giving us some understanding about the process because as Brother Lelikan is doing, he's trying to get 
political education and we shouldn't take for granted that people understand the whole process. So that's me down for now. Thank you so much. I think we are running uh, a bit six minutes late now compared to what we planned before. So do we still have more questions? What next? If you do have a question, what next? What are you looking for again? You can have a chat. You can tell us what area do you think you want us to, what topic are you looking forward for next time? Because I could see one of the brother brought question about Article 16, brought about uh, does our vote matters. Uh, I think this is a very interesting area of discussion. Uh, we'll be bringing different speakers on board. So please let it be interactive. If you have more questions, if you have more questions, let us know. Or you want us to call it a day for tonight, let us know as well. If you want us to call it a day for tonight, if you'd like to go on video to say shares, to say thank you to Brother Kweku for this educative, interesting, inspiring, and uh, well-prepared information, uh, materials, if you want to say, I'm ready for activism and willing to learn more. That's good. That's good. We all learn every day. We all learn every day. We all learn every day. You could also, if you notice anything in your area, let us know. If you want to lead a campaign, we can support you with any campaign. We can support you with any campaign. Right. Um, so I, sorry, I put in the chat the the uh gov uk website i was telling you about that can give you the information that i gave i gave out now that you've been at this presentation hopefully to make more sense and you know that it's not as cumbersome as you would have imagined the forms are quite simple so at least you know that so anytime you want to uh find a bit more at your leisure please uh use use that link i will be calling you one after the other to say uh, one or two things I'm starting from Larry. So Larry, I've got something to say. Ty. Good evening, everyone. Evening, go ahead. And thank you, Dr. Kweku, for this wonderful information you have shared with us. We are able to get the information we need. And we pray we'll be able to make use of them. I'm sorry, I, I joined a little bit late. I went for training, I was just coming but I was able to get the last information he passed. The message has been passed and we have shared it to other people also. We all come on board and make sure our vote counts. And whenever we need help, as you have said, we will also get in touch with you. Thank you, Mr. Kwaku. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining. To be late is better than never. You can follow us on Facebook. You can watch it all over again. And we've got the recorded type. So we might also put it on our YouTube channel. Uh, yes, I'm calling Tai Kai and Karate. Do you have something to say? Before I go to Guamaka, Masha, Mark Morris. Anyone that has something to say before we say good night to everyone for today? You are, yes, Benjamin, Odia, Rahana. I believe, okay, Masha, go ahead. I can see your hand. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Actually, I joined the meeting a little bit late. So, but with the little thing I had, uh, I, I can see that uh, there is uh, a free opportunity opportunity for everybody to participate. So I'll just have to go through the uh, link shared on this chat. So and and read about the uh, Jagger's political party. If I'm right, yeah. I think so. So I really appreciate this. Thank you. Thank you.
Mother Oliver, can you want to go to the next person? Uh, yes, let me check. Is anyone hand up again? I uh, don't see a hand up again. While I'm waiting for any hand or anyone that wants to interrupt, I've just got one thing to share, just this video. It might be helpful for those of you in Middlesbrough. Because to be part of political party or to be part of decision maker is about influencing policy. It's about influencing the future of our community. Because you can also be from governor, school governor, start from school governor, start from scrutiny panel member. Listening and being part of our community. Can we hear that? Um, yeah. Part of that might be being involved in, uh, for example, becoming involved in the community. Um, Alma's here as a councillor for this ward. Um, it's a particularly intense um, and close-knit community. Um, so it's great if as many people as possible can become active in that, can become helpers, can become part of part of the community in that way. Um, is there anything you want to ask or any um, issues around um, becoming political, becoming active? I'm going to have to leave, as I said, speak to Alma. She'll be able to help you or get in touch in our case, through the party. Um, we so want as many diverse groups as possible to be involved, to help each other to move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much once again. Can we give a round of applause again, please? Without wasting much of our time, uh, we'd like to invite our first speaker, He's going to also be talking about challenges PAM community are also facing. I think it's, it's, it's a very important point. Um, the work that we have done is about reviewing government policy. Uh, and obviously, you will, you will know that we are officers and we kind of uh, implement policy as it is directed to us. It doesn't mean that we agree with the policy. And I'm sure Rachel will talk about some of the findings when we did a survey around in terms of the is this really going to bring in the resources that are consumerate with the level of work that goes in i think there is a big fallacy around um health tourism don't get me wrong in other areas such as in london health tourism is a big thing but up here in the northeast it's not as big a thing but i suppose given that this is a, a, a meeting that's been facilitated uh, from a political point of view, we perhaps are restricted as officers in terms of how much we can go into the politics uh, behind the policy. But what we can flag with you is what we are seeing on the ground and the implications of that policy. And maybe that's up to, to the party to start looking at, so what does that mean in terms of challenging that policy or lobbying for those groups who are disproportionately being affected? I think your, your, your second question really highlights some of the ethical dilemma that doctors have. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. To an individual. Well, you're not eligible because your knee, you can relieve their symptoms. You are either left to make services should be based on clinical need and not on the ability to pay. Uh, so so there, is, there is a whole range of ethical dilemmas. If you are uh, a clinician and you're faced with someone who you know that through your intervention you can relieve their symptoms, you are either left to make an immigration decision to turn them away uh, or to treat them out of your compassion and then have your overseas manager saying to you, you shouldn't have treated them. So it presents lots of dilemmas. Uh, the other dilemma that it presents is, it then potentially means that you say to an individual, well, you're not eligible because your needs are not classified as agent. So basically go home, get worse, come in blue lighted hospital in, in, in an ambulance, and then you're agent, and then we'll treat you. Now, what does that mean in terms of the dignity of the individual, in terms of outcomes, but also from an economic point of view, we know that the interventions that we deliver for people who are blue lighted into hospital 
are a lot more expensive than what we deliver for people who walk into the hospital. So, so some of this is, is kind of built on a false economy, uh, which says that actually by turning these people away, uh, that will make a saving. Actually, if those people go away and they become worse, then they become... That is just a bit about uh, community challenges, issues facing community. The only way to be part of those policies, to change policy, to influence policy, is to be around the table. Oh, Shelly Shizel from uh, America, the first elected American woman, she said, you don't make progress by standing on the sideline, whipping, complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas, by getting involved. If they don't bring, give you seats, on the table, bring your own chair, get involved, get involved. That's why we are calling this platform. Let's start coming together, learn together, share from each other. And from there, we can be able to influence any policy. We can be able to be part of those changes. Welcome brother Olami Waju, have you got something to say? We are rounding up now. We are rounding up now, thank you. Mark Morris, if you've got something to say, we're rounding up now. Masha, is it the same hand? If there's nothing to say again, I think uh, I have to say good night. Thank you for joining. Brother Quickly, do you have any last comments before you go? No, I just have to say thank you for those that chose to spend their evening to learn a bit about the political process. It is encouraging. And I thank you for facilitating this because it's one person at a time one person at a time. And I think something has been learned here. So uh, it's just fantastic. Thank you for that. Oh, Tai Kai and Parat, if there's anything you want to promote, I could give you that one minute slot. I could see you. Anything you want the community to know about? Is there anyone doing any local projects you want community to be aware to support? Is there any local campaign? This is last two minutes platform to say good night if there's nothing. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Well done, well done. Thank you, Brother Ola. Well done for everything. I think it's been a been a learning process. And I think let's move it forward. Let's stick together. And I, I am with the black community, you know, as you as you, as you know. Um, and uh, we want to push it forward and we want to get some uh, the host community with us as well. And I think we need to push it forward, you know, quickly. So we, as much as we are behind, we want to come on the level and go forward, you know. Thank you. Thank you. So good night, everyone. Love to see you. If you have any further questions, email us. Thank you. Good night for now. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, good night. everyone. Good night. Good night.